Hey guys, Elijah here, and welcome back to Unlock the Swap, where we meet all sorts of neat people and go to all sorts of great places and have awesome adventures. And today, I'm going to be joined by Mr. Scott from the General Tommy Franks Museum. The General Tommy Franks is an amazing American hero. So let's unlock the swap. Let's do this thing. And remember, God bless America. First of all, hi. How are you hi. doing? How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. I'm holding up. How are you guys holding up your end? We're doing good. Um, what what's your name? Oh, my name is Scott. I'm the museum manager. That's so cool. Um, where are where is uh, the General Tom Franks Museum on this map? <laughs> we are in the little town of Hobart, Oklahoma. Um, we so, are right yeah, right. about where you're pointing at, a little farther. No you know where Altus is? Yeah, right here. Okay, we are basically north of Altus. So right here. Yeah, about where you got that open lock on your Mickey map, yeah. So General General Tommy Franks is from Hobart? No, his wife is from Hobart. He's originally from Winniewood, Oklahoma. And this oh. is where they retired at. So to give back to the town his wife is from, that's why a four-star General's Museum is in the little town of Hobart, Oklahoma. And they lived, oh, about a half hour, maybe a little longer from here. Um, what exhibits do you have in this museum? Okay, well, I'll give you that. We're, we're dedicated to a retired Army four-star general. His name is Tommy Franks. Um, and his claim to fame, you want to put it that way, he was the commander-in-chief of all the forces that went into Afghanistan after 9-11, after the towers came down, and then on to Iraq. Uh, but he started his career way back in Vietnam as a young lieutenant. So the museum is basically set up in different areas. One room's got all some words and decoration. The next room's about his hometown. The one we're in now you see is our Medal of Honor and where he grew up in Midland. We have another room that goes on about Vietnam, the Cold War. And then we have a really nice 9-11 display. We have a 3,000 pound, 14 foot I-beam from Tower 2 of the World Trade Center on display. Now, the reason we have the Medal of Honor, to get back into that, is um, he didn't earn the Medal of Honor. But what it is, um, well, Steve, he can walk a little bit. The Medal of Honor Society, the guys who earn it, um, as you know, get together every year in the honor, maybe who passed away, who may have gotten one. And in 2011, in Dallas, Texas, they got together. And at that time period, they gave General Franks what's called a Patriot Award. And here's a cool picture of General Franks with some Medal of Honor recipients receiving the Patriot Award. Okay? What is the Patriot Award? Um, it's just an award that the Medal of Honor guys give out. It's just for, anybody can get it for Outstanding American. And that year they happened to give it to General Franks. So, um, as a result of that, we thought, hey, we're getting this from the Medal of Honor Society. Let's talk more about the Medal of Honor. So it took me a while, but believe it or not, I had to go through Fort Knox in Kentucky. They're the people who issued the Army's version the Medal of Honor. And after about six months worth of paperwork, they sent us, and I'll have to Steve walk back over here again. I heard Fort Knox is like super high security. Well, people have got to realize this too. It's also just like Fort Sill. It's an Army post. It's their main um, tank Base. So that's where if you're going to learn how to drive tanks or fix tanks, that's where it's out of uh, out of Fort Knox. But it, it's just a regular army post. It's famous, but it's just a base. So, but they're the ones that issue the Medal of Honor. So it took me like six months to do the paperwork, and then, like I said, they sent me the Army's version of the Medal of Honor in a little box, and we have it now permanently on display. So General Franks did earn the Medal of Honor. But he got this cool award from the Medal of Honor Society, the guys who were They sent us the Medal of Honor that you see in the case over here. And that is the real deal. That is the Army's version of it. If it belonged to an individual, on the back would have their name. On the back, it's just plain. And we also have a plaque signed by 20 past Medal of Honor winners. 
So that's part of our display over here, the setup. Okay? Mm-hmm. And can you see up top? I can't tell in the video. Can you see up here? Mm-hmm. Okay, so there is three different versions of the Medal of Honor. The one on the left is the Army's that you see in our case. The one in the middle belongs to the Navy, the Coast Guard, the Marine Corps, and the one on the right is the Air Forces. So there is three different versions of the Medal of Honor. Um, how do you earn the Medal of Honor? I know you said that how do you get it, but how do you earn it? Okay, good question. Um, <laughs> The best way I was trying to explain this in my head is it's only earned during wartime. You can, it's not a peacetime medal, so you can only get it during war. And you have to go above and beyond the call of duty. That's kind of uh, questionable, because there's guys who've like thrown themselves on live grenades to save other people who've earned it. There's also people who've been prisoners of war who've earned it. There's medics and chaplains who never even picked up a gun who've earned it. Basically, it's like somebody has to see you do something heroic. They put it, you do paperwork, and this goes up the chain of command. Now, it gets to a board, and it's totally up to a board, and I don't know how they figure out who or what, but they are the ones that vote out and say, yeah, he deserves a Medal of Honor. No, we're just going to give him. There's one below that, like the Army has an Army Cross, the Air Force has an Air Force Cross, and a Navy Cross. Um, so it's just a, a subject to whatever this board decides. Um, I've heard of people who've been put in for the Medal of Honor, didn't get it, and got a cross instead, like a Navy Cross. Then I've heard of guys who've had the Navy Cross for years and were resubmitted and got the Medal of Honor. So I think it's just totally up to the board what they consider above and beyond the call of duty. Um, I don't know the entire criteria. Like I said, it's, it's a military and civilian board, and it's just totally up to these guys what they consider. Um, and that's why it's so rare. There's only been 3,508 of them given out since the Civil War. And there's only 71 of them alive today. And believe it or not, two guys from World War II in their really late 90s are still out there kicking around wearing the Medal of Honor. So, I know what that is. So, but when he was in uh, World War II, he was Woody Williams. You guys, are just, we're on the same page. Willie Williams, a, he was a Marine. Uh, they call him Woody. Uh, a plane thrower guy, I think, on Iwo Jima. And I think he's still alive. He's one of the two that's still alive. When I was really little, little, little <laughs> I met Mr. Woody Williams. He, I thought he was Woody from Toy Story. <laughs> that's funny. That's and funny. when I... When I thought, uh, when I met Hershey Miyamura, I thought he was the inventor of Hershey chocolate bars. <laughs> yeah, I didn't meet him, but I read up on him and we have some stuff on him. And yeah, he was a flamethrower guy, a uh, Marine. Uh, I guess he was, he's real short. He couldn't get in the other branches. Nobody wanted him and he finally joined the Marines. And same thing, he got wounded, picked up a flamethrower, used that one up, grabbed another flamethrower. And it's a cool thing. When he I was see in him both his flamethrower. Yeah. When he was in his 80s, he picked up another flamethrower again and used it uh, on a TV show. The, the History Channel had the show about people doing stuff. I love Medal of Honor recipients. I can't wait to talk about them. Okay, well, go ahead. Start asking me some questions, and I'll see what I can answer for you. Who was the other person in World War II? Two was it Bud Day? Well, Bud, there's no one. I'm not sure who the other one is still alive to this day. I know what he is, and there's one other guy. I I, I just don't remember his name, uh, who he is, and stuff. Uh, Bud Day was pretty cool. He was an Air Force guy. I'm retired Air Force, and he was a POW, so he got his being a POW. Um, I'll give you another cool story we're talking about, guys. Uh, a chaplain, okay, an Army uh, chaplain, he was a priest, um, named uh, Father Capone. He was captured and was in a North Korean prisoner of war camp. And how he got his Medal of Honor, he would go out and steal food for the other prisoners. He would hold Sunday service, and every time he did it, the North Korean prison guards would beat him severely, unfortunately. And they're not much in the religion. 
Um, he would wash and take care of the other prisoners. And then one time he held Sunday service there for Easter. Uh, they beat him so severely, they took him away, and he was never, ever seen again. So when the war ended, all the other POWs said, this guy needs to have the Medal of Honor. If it wasn't for him, half of us would not have lived. And he basically gave our lives for us. So that's another way how you get the Medal of Honor. And he's up for sainthood now. So we might eventually have a uh, Roman Catholic priest who's a Medal of Honor recipient and a saint. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, he's in the first stage of becoming a saint. Yeah. Uh, look him up. His name is Father Capone. I think it's K-U-P-O-N. Just like, I don't know if you've seen it at your age, I know there's a movie out called Hacksaw Ridge. Oh. Uh, yeah. About a yeah. Medal of Honor recipient. The postcard, yeah. Yeah. We have him as his postcard. Yeah, he he's, postcard. yeah, um, and he was another interesting story. We saw the movie. He was bullied. He was a Latter Day Saint. He didn't believe in picking up guns or rifles. They thought he was a coward for not wanting to use a gun. He ended up being a medic and saving seventy-two guys' lives. Um, don't know a lot about some of the newer guys and things like that. I kind of gravitate towards the guys in the past. So those are my, and it's kind of funny. The guys you like about the same guys I like. Is it? It's Mr. Gary Biker. Gary Biker? He is one of my favorite guys. Mine too. My my uh, actual favorite is Mr. Doc Bauer because he threw a grenade on himself. Yeah, Gary Biker is pretty cool. He was a, um, a medic in Vietnam and he lives in upstate New York where I'm from. And the cameraman who's standing back here is from up there too. Gary Biker is pretty cool. Vietnam medic who was wounded a few times and would not leave the battlefield and kept dressing wounds and saving guys' lives. So right there you go. He didn't carry a gun. He didn't pick up. He didn't throw and, himself in a Did he grenade. live in a cave? Didn't he yes, live in a cave? Yes, he did. He lived in a cave in New Hampshire. After Vietnam, he went back and Vietnam veterans weren't treated very well. And he ended up living in a cave in um, New Hampshire. He would leave his cave and go to seminary school and then back to his cave, and that's how he lived for quite a few years. Um, but now he lives in upstate New York, he's a preacher himself, and he helps other um, soldiers who have PSD and all that stuff. Pretty cool guy, I like Gary Biker, he's pretty wild. He's one of my favorites too. Dad's favorite also. Cool. What about Benny Atkins? Benny Atkins, we got to meet him, I've got to meet only one Medal of Honor recipient, and it was Benny Atkins. Um, his granddaughter, we do a celebration of freedom here. It's a, oh, a fundraiser, and we have a carnival downtown, and we have singing acts, and his granddaughter, I guess it still lives here in Oklahoma, because Benny's from here, um, sang at it, and she mentioned that her grandfather, Benny Atkins, oh, excuse me, was a Medal of Honor recipient, he's still around. So we got him to come to our museum and I got to meet him. Pretty cool dude, Vietnam veteran. Um, he looks like a Vietnam veteran and a top sergeant. I think he was a command sergeant major when he finally got to Vietnam. Uh, equivalent of killing like 50 or 60 Viet Cong. I guess he picked up an M16 when that was emptied out and he picked up grenades. Uh, then he went into the jungle. I don't know if you heard that background. He hid in the jungle with some of his guys, and they were attacked by a tiger, and he killed a tiger with a knife. <laughs> I mean, he yeah. killed a tiger with a mice? With a knife, yeah. They, they were under attack in the jungle. He said the Viet Cong didn't scare him. He said the tiger was the scariest thing when they were out in the jungle. Uh, these Medal of Honor recipients, their stories are pretty wild. So, yeah, I, get, I got to meet one, and I do have his coin. So uh, we have a couple of coins given to General Franks, but Benny Atkins gave me his personal coin. So I have one Medal of Honor coin. And got to meet one guy and he was wearing his Medal of Honor around his neck. So yeah, he's pretty cool. He's a um, tough old guy. But he has COVID, so we really need to pray for him. Does he really? I am sorry to hear that. Wow, okay. So I hope he's um, hanging in there and stuff. And there's been two fathers and sons who have earned the Medal of Honor. Uh, really? Yeah, one, one, yes. Teddy Roosevelt, uh, the president, he's the only president to earn the Medal of Honor uh, for his charge. He's my favorite Hill president. And, yeah, and Kettle Hill, my favorite too. And his son, 
Teddy Roosevelt Jr. earned it on D-Day uh, as a one-star general. And the other father and son is the MacArthur's. Douglas MacArthur got his during World War II, and his father, Arthur MacArthur, <laughs> earned his during the Civil War. Um, any other questions? If not, I Steve's arm is probably <laughs> getting a little tired. Well, other than that, that's it. We can't okay. wait to visit you. This was